Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Tonight on NJTV News, improving schools. Camden school officials celebrate progress on park tests, but not everyone agrees on how they got there or where the district is even headed. A new report says there's a better way to battle the opioid epidemic in New Jersey. How one show is helping to fight the opioid crisis, one performance at a time. This is one of many signs you'll see throughout Garfield as part of the city's month-long pedestrian safety campaign. And it comes just a week after a resident was struck and killed while walking along the street. Plus a display of horticultural exuberance arrayed in a bed of roses. Those stories are more next on NJTV News. Live from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark, this is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, thank you for joining us. One of the last school districts still under state control has reason to cheer, but also has a long way to go. Senior correspondent David Cruz reports on how Camden's trying to get back on track. There was a kind of pep rally feel to today's press conference at Camden Prep, where the acting superintendent and city officials gathered to celebrate advances made by Camden students on the standardized park tests. That is worth a round of applause in and of itself. Give a round of applause for just being in this beautiful facility. We are moving forward. Yes, give everyone a round of applause. With the state takeover of the city's schools in 2013, the city has seen a shift towards so called Renaissance schools, a charter traditional school hybrid, and straight up charters, with more than half of the city's kids now enrolled in Renaissance or charter schools. Today's scores, which show double digit jumps in park scores, at the mostly charter schools listed are a result of the district's new focus on school choice, what? says the acting superintendent. By partnering with schools across the city to empower families to choose the best school for their child for a fair and unified enrollment system, we have allowed more students to secure seats in the school they believe will offer them the best education. All of these changes have resulted in more Camden students reading and doing math as well as or better than their peers across the state. McCombs admits that citywide park score increases are much more modest than the 29% jump in English and 24% jump in math scores seen here at Camden Prep, one of 53 schools in New York and New Jersey managed by Uncommon Schools. Lately, officials have dropped the word charter when referring to the schools where a majority of the city's kids go, preferring instead the term partner. Why don't you use the word charter? Um, why don't I use the word charter? Um, they're public charter schools, so the red You keep referring to them as partner schools? Yes, because they partner with the district in but order is it, to... Is it purposeful that you're not using the word charter? No, it's not purposeful. Because you haven't used it at all today. Yeah, it's not purposeful. McCombs says she doesn't care what you call a good school so long as it's a good school. But Keith Benson, the head of the teachers union, which has been critical of the state takeover and the turn towards charters, says it's not as simple as that. They say it doesn't matter what you call these schools so long as the kids are doing well. No, because uh, these uh, renaissance schools or takeover schools are pushed into, we're pushed into our, our communities for a reason that has a lot to do with broader reasons like redevelopment and uh, trying to remake you know the demographics in the city and and folks know urban planners know that it's very difficult to remake a city when the existing public school system is, is existing as as it is so in order to rebrand it to remake it they create these new formulas or new models of, edu of public education in terms of corporate uh, charters and you see them only pushed in uh, urban districts like ours. The superintendent says the positive scores show the need to spread the gospel of charter and renaissance schools across, quote, all school types, meaning traditional public schools, too. But critics like Benson say don't let the rosy numbers fool you. 
Real reform takes time, he says, and lasting change can't be measured by short-term results on the standardized test, which ironically, the state says, may not be the best way to measure students' success anyway. In Camden, I'm David Cruz, NJTV News. Property tax deduction caps top tonight's business news. Rhonda Schaffler is off today. Here with details of that and more is Joanna Gagas. Joanna? Mary Alice, the IRS has already rejected Governor Murphy's effort to bypass the Trump administration's state and local tax cap, but the governor's moving ahead with the plan anyway. The Department of Community Affairs announced the adoption of regulations that would allow municipalities, counties, and school districts to establish charitable funds. Now, that allows New Jerseyans to make their full deductions. New Jersey is one of several states suing the government over the cap. While Amazon decides its HQ2 location, a new study shows that choosing Newark could benefit its bottom line. The independent research group Just Capital measures the value of a company when they consider the social impact of their location. Now, Newark is one of 20 cities considered, but the only one with a 19.5% unemployment rate for people of color and a poverty rate of 29%. According to the research, Newark offers Amazon the only chance to increase its social impact rating from number 50, not 55 to number 9. New Jersey lawmakers are considering a bill to tax plain fuel. The state already has a four-cent tax on the fuel used only during taxi and takeoff, but the new bill would tax all fuel purchased in New Jersey. The tax would be used to fund the new PATH extension and other airport capital projects. Support for the bill followed party lines, with Republicans blasting the measure, saying it'll increase costs for travelers. Sports fans beware a dispute between Optimum and Fox could make them miss major parts of the football and baseball season. Eight Giants games, seven Eagles, and two Jets games are scheduled to air on Fox this season. And if the Yankees make it to the World Series, those games will air on Fox. And beyond sports, several Fox channels could go dark, including FX and National Geographic. Both sides are blaming the other, but they have until October 1st to reach a deal before nearly one million customers are impacted. The closing of several malls has caused retailers to rethink their approach. Take the Cherry Hill Mall that's adding stores that offer an experience, like the Peloton store, where shoppers can hop on a bike and go for a spin, or the Happy Return store, where online shoppers can bring back those items that they don't want. Menlo Park Mall is opening a Disney Junior Play Zone, which is a free play area for toddlers to age 10, and that includes lounge seating and a charging station for those weary parents. On Wall Street today, Dow Industrials fall as hopes for a trade truce fade. And those are your top business stories. Support for the Business Report is provided by Atlantic City Electric, an Exelon company, connecting communities and powering Southern New Jersey. Support for the medical report is provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. New sobering numbers on the toll taken by New Jersey's drug addiction crisis. State Attorney General Gerbeer Graywall says last year, 2,750 people died from overdose, up 24% from the year before. Deaths from the synthetic opioid fentanyl and similar compounds were up 28%. Heroin overdose deaths were down slightly last year, but the number of times the overdose antidote naloxone was administered doubled. And the number of opioid prescriptions written by doctors dropped almost 14 percent. The total number of opioid prescriptions in this state are dropping. And I think that's important because if you look historically at data, the, that rise in overdoses has taken place with a concurrent rise in the prescription of opioids. And so the hope is if the prescriptions level off, the overdoses and the addiction will level off as well. But even if prescriptions continue to level off and treatment programs continue to expand, New Jersey is still on pace to lose 3,000 people this year to opioids, shattering records for the fourth consecutive year. Former Governor Jim McGreevy and the New Jersey Reentry Corporation he leads are offering a blueprint they say has helped other states halt the rising death toll. Michael Hill reports. Kathleen Foster lost her son to an addiction 21 years ago while he was waiting for an inpatient bed. The third Tuesday I had a call to tell admissions to take Christian off the waiting list. 
because he died while waiting. Foster and other mothers whose children have battled opioid addictions endorsed the recommendations of the New Jersey Reentry Corporation's new report. And the time is now to move forward to establish the necessary infrastructure so that families are not guessing. The report recommends replicating best practice models in Vermont, Texas, and Rhode Island. It calls for medication-assisted treatment, recovery coaches, navigators to coordinate care, and a health information exchange. They're not telling each of these sources of treatment what's going on in the other sources of treatment. And it's not because they don't want to. It's because they can't. It's because the disease is disrupting their ability to think like a patient who wants help. Therefore, we as a society have to set up the structures to do that for them. The report hits hard on calling for continuity of care, encouraging at least 6 to 12 months of treatment, acknowledging the brain takes much longer than a 28-day program to heal. In people with addiction, the pathways that reinforce, that continue the addictive behavior actually get built up as cellular pathways. It takes months if not even years, to undo those pathways and the damage that they cause. The Reentry Corporation says it's time for New Jersey to integrate services and care. We need to integrate these systems so that we have, if you will, an addiction treatment infrastructure. Researchers who wrote the report say money is not the issue. Waste, though, is one of them. Looking at the resources that New Jersey has, and it is clear to us that the state of New Jersey has enough existing infrastructure in order to implement and restructure what we already have um, to create a hub-and-spoke model that mirrors that of Vermont. The report says better coordination and better integration of services, and perhaps even more legislation, can save states lots of money. Vermont, $6.7 million. Texas, more than $3 million. How would New Jersey achieve integration? Perhaps through better coordination, leadership, and legislative action. You don't need stars to align when the systems already do. If I could have my druthers that there would be uh, a joint effort by the governor's office and the legislature to implement this system. This report is the best thing I've seen in four years in terms of a, a cohesive, evidence-based way in which to treat this awful addiction, or this awful epidemic rather, and to move the state forward. One doctor calls the lack of an integrated treatment and recovery system tragic. And it's tragic because this is a disease we know how to treat. This is a disease that science has given us the tools to address. In Trenton, Michael Hill, NJTV News. Meantime, at the George Street Playhouse in New Brunswick, a new musical crafted to reach and teach teens and their parents about the effect of opioids, Leah Mishkin reports. Any Town is the story of a senior in high school named Hope Baker. She's a star athlete and has a 4.0 GPA. It's her last soccer game that will change her life. She is injured. And as a result of that injury, a boy that she likes and is really interested in offers her a prescription opioid pill. And that um, transforms her. The musical was created to highlight opioid abuse and how it's impacting teens and families of all backgrounds. New data shows eight people die every day in New Jersey from a drug-related overdose. The writer of the show says he conducted many interviews to put the storyline together. What we also learned um, in the writing of this is genetic predisposition um, has an incredible power to make someone much more vulnerable. So we learn in the course of the story that Hope's father um, was a former addict. The production is touring middle and high schools in New Jersey to bring awareness about the dangers of prescription opioid misuse. How important is the casting of this? It's. Do you find yeah. that you pick actors who somewhat relate to the topic so they portray it even? Uh huh. It's a great question. Casting is always critical. What we're looking for are people that are wonderful artists, um, but even uh, better humanitarians.
Every show ends with a post-play conversation so that there is a direct conversation with the children and students afterwards. They've seen this character um, of Joey go through these problems and then they hear myself as Joe Pasergio tell uh, mine and my brother's story. I think it'll just connect it that much stronger for them. Joe Pasercio says his older brother was addicted to painkillers. His brother is now four years sober, but Pasercio says it was a tough time for his entire family. He's the biggest motivation I have for doing this, this show. Um, this is my second year on tour with George Street, and um, this show was a very big reason why I decided to come back for a second season. Um, and I do think about him uh, a lot during this show. I see a lot of him in hope. She's dope as any chick can be, cause she's always playing tricks on me. Pasercio plays Hope's best friend on stage. He watches Hope deal with what she's dealing with, um, and he doesn't quite know what the right step is. Um, he has a big conflict of does he tell Hope's mom um, what's going on with Hope, or does he keep it to himself? His parents have seen the show. They really enjoyed it. Um, could, they, could they relate to the story? Absolutely. As someone who's actually gone through... Yeah, absolutely. My mother cried um, because she saw all of herself in Robin, who is Hope's mother. On opening day, the audience was filled with leaders in healthcare and education. The lights dimmed, the actors sang the opening number, and the spotlight was put on a new kind of prevention. What do you hope people will leave the theater feeling after that first show? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I hope people come away with is is the feeling of hope. At George Street Playhouse for NJTV News, I'm Laya Mishkin. A pontifical visit, that tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Jersey City, and an extraordinary appearance by Coptic Orthodox Pope to Wadros II, the 118th Pope of Alexandria and Pope of the See of St. Mark. The Coptic Orthodox Church has a long history of persecution in Egypt, where dozens of people died last year in two Coptic Church bombings. So security around St. Mark's Church was unusually tight, as the pontiff met with Jersey City Mayor Steve Fulop, helped plant a tree, cut the ribbon on a new fellowship hall, and even blessed a couple getting engaged during his historic visit. Next to Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakers, where 24 KC 46A tankers have been cleared for landing. The U.S. Air Force has issued its final decision to send the fleet here after an environmental study concluded the tanker's presence would have no significant impact. The 46As are reportedly cleaner, quieter, and more fuel efficient than the KC 10s they'll replace. Finally, Milford resting up from the Milford Fall Festival at Bed Race. This quaint Delaware River town inaugurated its free community celebration back in 1982. Under its rebranded name, Milford Alive, it's topped the Hunter and Happenings list as Hunter and County's best outdoor event three years in a row, as well as Hunter and County's best family event. The battle of local history and culture is capped by fireworks, but the big draw is the bed races. The winners, the Delaware Valley High School wrestling team with a time of 24 and a half seconds flat. Don't knock it till you've tried it. And that's our Garden State Express for Tuesday, September 25th. Something up in your neighborhood, tip us off. Twenty-seven percent of all crash-related fatalities between 2011 and 15 were pedestrians. That, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, was nearly double the national average. Raven Santana reports on what one town's doing about it. In some cases, I think to myself, only if the person wasn't texting and walking. Only if the person looked both ways before crossing at the corner. Pedestrian safety is a serious problem in our state. Last year alone, 184 people died in pedestrian vehicle crashes, according to the New Jersey State Police. 
people are distracted, people are not slowing down for pedestrians. We, uh, unfortunately, in the last few years have had two crossing guards that have gotten struck um, by people. One was seriously hurt, one was hurt a little bit, but it's, it's really unacceptable. And now the city of Garfield is joining the ranks of 74 other cities and towns by participating in a month-long safety campaign called Street Smart New Jersey. The statewide campaign focuses on five core messages. Drivers are reminded to stop for pedestrians and obey speed limits. Pedestrians are urged to use crosswalks and wait for the walk sign. And the fifth message, heads up, phones down, is for everyone. We at the Garfield Police Department have been planning this street smart pedestrian safety campaign for some time. Tragically, though, it comes after our community lost one of our residents in a fatal crash last week. On September 17th, 42-year-old Giovanni Rivera was walking along MacArthur Avenue when he was struck and killed by a driver. His death is a reminder of how just a few miles over the speed limit can mean the difference between life and death. This video demonstrates the results of a driver braking suddenly for a pedestrian at the same point at 25 miles per hour and at 40 miles per hour. According to the campaign, a person struck at 40 miles per hour has an 85% chance of dying, while a person struck at 20 miles per hour has a 95% chance of living. And the city says part of the problem is that pedestrians are relying on drivers to stop for them. Now you have 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old kids work, walking around with earbuds, walking down at a phone, not paying attention, and getting to a crosswalk or going out into a street and, and not looking or, or hearing. Police officers will also be handing out pedestrian safety information and reminding people who are driving and walking to be safe and to look out for other travelers when using the roads. In Garfield, Raven Santana, NJTV News. Support for the Environment Report provided by PSENG, making things more sustainable for New Jersey. Whether the variety is hybrid tea, floribunda, climbing a shrub, a rose by any other name is a beauty. Lauren Wonka followed her nose to where the rose rules in the Garden State. I can't think of another flower that has a history with gardeners and with artists and society like the rose does. So the rose is probably the most popular flower there is. After a season of hard work in the garden, it's a chance to show off homegrown roses. Every year, the Jersey Shore Rose Society hosts their rose show. Most home gardeners do it from a sense of passion, but then you start growing something and it's really looking great, and then you have an opportunity to do something competitive with it. It really takes it to another level. Founded more than 45 years ago, the Jersey Shore Rose Society hosts its annual event at Deep Cut Gardens, which is home to more than 70 different varieties spread across a picturesque formal rose garden. They're not difficult. They're not hard to grow. They're e very easy. They've been around for centuries. If you go to an old uh, cemetery, they have uh, old garden roses there that no one's taken care of, but yet they're still there thriving. As for the perfect growing conditions. We generally like in the range of 70 to about 82 degrees, full sun. And when we say full sun, we generally mean a minimum of six hours a day. Um, better if there's more sun. You want the soil to be moist but not soaking wet and not bone dry. On this day, 200 rose exhibits are displayed. The society typically has even more, but the hot, humid summer wasn't ideal for this year's flowers. The public's welcome to bring their roses, which are judged by members of the American Rose Society. There are 32 different classes or categories, along with an entry for arrangements and photography. What are you yeah. looking for? Form, color, substance, um, stem and foliage is another thing. You want a nice stem to it, good clean foliage. Jersey Shore Rose Society Vice President Dr. Suni Bolar and her husband were awarded the Queen of Show for their Dublin Rose. If you put an arrangement together and even if there's just one rose in it, it just, you know, calls out to you. 
So what happens to these roses after the competition? Many are given to lucky friends. The exhibitors here say they don't mind because they can enjoy some of these blooms in their own gardens until November. In Middletown, I'm Lauren Wonko, NJTV News. And now some noteworthy facts that help you know Jersey. The number of naloxone administrations doubled in New Jersey from 2015 to 17. A new report finds 86% of patients in opioid addiction treatment programs in New Jersey have been treated before. Camden schools have been under New Jersey state control since 2013. And Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst is New Jersey's second largest employer. If there's someone who you'd like to get to know Jersey, share. Use hashtag no Jersey. Tomorrow on NJTV News, are gang members getting younger and more violent? To share any story you've seen tonight, go to njtvnews.org. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. The members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And PSE and G, we make things work for communities. Have some water. Have Look some. at these kids. How are you? What do you see? I see myself. I became an ESL teacher to give my students what I wanted when I came to this country. The opportunity to learn, to dream, to achieve a chance to belong and to be an American. My name is Julia Toriani Crompton and I'm proud to be an NJEA member.